But even with celestial navigation, errors could accumulate over long trips. Earlier in the journey, when Earhart crossed the Atlantic, they missed their intended airport in hazy conditions. Noonan's calculations were reasonable, but small errors put them off course. Luckily, in Africa, there were plenty of other places to land safely. The same could not be said for Howland. So, for the flight across the Pacific, Earhart commandeered three U.S. Navy and Coast Guard ships. The Itasca would be stationed at Howland Island, the Ontario would be halfway along the route, and the Swan was positioned midway between Howland and Hawaii. The Atasca would send out smoke signals as Earhart approached to help her spot the island. But even more importantly, all ships were equipped with radio. Now, in 1937, radio was still fairly new tech. German physicist Heinrich Hertz discovered radio waves in the late 1880s. He excited electrons to oscillate back and forth in his transmitter, and a few meters away, his receiver was a loop of wire with a small gap in it. 